Let's go through some other things that have to do with this. We're not going to prove, or I'm not going to derive the equation, but there's also something called uh, length, length contraction, which is length equals L naught over gamma, where L naught is, of course, the proper length. And what this has to do with is the fact that as you move faster, your length is contracted. So if I were moving on a spaceship moving to your right at, no, we'll go back to the train. If I was on the train moving to the right at 0.95 times the speed of light, you would measure this meter stick to have a length that was approximately one third of its original length. How long would I measure it to be? One meter, because I am moving with it, right? So I would be compressed as well. So as I move along in the direction of travel, my length is going to be contracted by approximately a third in this particular case, the concept of length contraction. There is also this equation. One of the most famous equations in science. Who's seen it before? Uh-huh. You've never seen it, Abigail. Interesting. Just never seen it. Please tell me what all the letters stand for, Khan. Um, is it like energy? Energy? Mass. Mass. Is it the speed of light? And the speed of light squared. This is called the mass energy equivalence principle. The idea that energy and mass are one and the same thing. They're two sides of the same coin. Energy is mass, mass is energy. The speed of light class has a magnitude of? 3.00 times 10 to the eighth meters per second. And then we're going to square it. It's a pretty large number, agree? Therefore, there is a lot of energy stored in a little amount of mass. It's a pretty famous example of this. Some famous bombs, right? Where basically they were able to take the idea that if you can convert mass to energy, you can have a large energy explosion. The atomic bomb. Okay. Unfortunately, this equation, as written on the board, is not quite right. They're missing a knot. It is actually E naught, which is called the rest energy. Because the amount of energy or the amount of mass of an object is actually dependent on how fast it is moving. The energy is equal to gamma times E naught which means the faster you move, the more energy you have, and the more massive you are. So let's review. As you move faster, class, what happens to time? It slows down. What happens to your length? It gets contracted, it gets smaller. And what happens to your mass? It increases. Oh yeah, that makes sense, thanks. Even better, let's talk about limits. Oops. As velocity, as the speed of the object approaches the speed of light. Let's just start with, let's say, for example, that the velocity equals the speed of light. We have this equation, gamma, which equals 1 over the square root of 1 minus v over c squared. If the velocity equals the speed of light, class, what's v divided by c? One. Try that again. Class, what's v divided by c? One. One. What's 1 squared? One. What's 1 minus 1? Zero. What's 0 squared? Zero. Zero. What's 1 divided by 0? Define. Notice, when v is equal to c, gamma is equal to 1 over 0, which is undefined. It can't exist. So according to the laws of physics, you cannot go the speed of light. OK. What if v, or what if v approaches c? What if the velocity approaches c? It's just a little bit smaller. So if the speed of the object is just a little bit smaller, 0.99999, 
nine times the speed of light. What do you get then when you take the velocity divided by the speed of light standard? Value-wise. You're going to get 0.99999. When you square it, you're going to get something that's still very, very close to 1, but just less than 1. What happens, class, if you take 1 minus 0.99999? What do you get? A very small number, 0. Point, however many zeros. OK, we're going to square that. It's still a very small number, agree? What's 1 divided by a really small number? A very large number. Okay. So in other words, as the velocity approaches the speed of light, gamma approaches infinity. OK, let's talk about what that means. If gamma approaches infinity as you get closer to the speed of light and time slows down, this means that if you were able to reach the speed of light, time would stop. In addition to that, what would happen to your overall shape? What would, the, what would you, the object, be shaped like? Donahoe? It would be really, really small. Ah, but I need more than that. I agree with that, but I need a little bit more. Better just, uh, say again? Actually, that's not quite correct, because remember, length contraction is only in one dimension. So you would shrink one dimension down. Yes? You would be a flat plane. So you would have, time would stop, you would be squished so that you were a flat plane, and how much mass would you have? What's the word? Infinite. You would have an infinite amount of mass. So to review, if you were able to get to the speed of light, according to the known laws of physics, you would have time stop, you would become a two-dimensional object, and you would have an infinite amount of mass. Can you have an infinite amount of mass? No. In other words, the speed of light is the universal speed limit. You cannot get a speeding ticket for exceeding the speed of light. You can't. You can't do it. Carolyn. This is awesome. No, no, give me the question. Give me the full question. I want to hear it. That there was, um, did they have the particle? I think there was like the muon. Uh huh. Muon. 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 That was traveling at faster than the speed. Right. At the Large Hadron Collider, they, the Large Hadron Collider, they some had some results published in uh, early, late last year, which showed that they had some particles moving faster than the speed of light, and it made national news, right? Like, as I'm sure you all realize. Yes, absolutely. Nation it did actually make national news, right. You know what didn't make national news? The fact that they found a wire that was loose. And that was, that was. But it was fun. I really enjoyed that national news because it was like, OK, so let's say, let's say that they're right because they had done, they'd done exhaustive research try, and trying to figure out where their mistake was. And they, they couldn't find it, so they published the results. And um, they had proven that they had this particle which was able to move faster than the speed of light, which means all of this is wrong, which is so much fun. Because if we're wrong, that means that there's something else that's right that's more interesting than this. I think this is very interesting. But uh, it would have been fun, but unfortunately, I'm sorry. They didn't make national news because it's not nearly as exciting. All right, so far, uh, we've proven nothing can go that fast.